Sanya and I'm going to be talking about a very controversial issue which is the cause and risk factors for autism. Uh, this is my CV. Now the traditional understanding of autism was that uh, it is a malfunctioning of the brain and it's purely genetic and that there was no cure for it and only treatment was behavioral and psychoeducational. But since we understand more about autism as uh, more uh, high functioning autistic people like Temple Grandin have uh, increased our knowledge about autism, become more broad based and recent studies have shown that is not just the brain but other parts of the body that are involved, that it is the interaction between the genetics, biological, immunological and allergic triggers and very importantly environmental toxicity. Modern research has shown that toxins and other uh, environmental pesticides, things like that can damage the child's body either through oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, dysbiosis or gut issues, inflammation and immune dysfunction. And the child is particularly vulnerable in the first two years of life. Now, the more recent understanding of autism is it's a complex medical disorder. It's genetic, neuroinflammatory, immune dysfunction, metabolic dysfunction, particularly in the mitochondria, the methylation reactions and due to oxidative stress. And there are many comorbid conditions like intestinal problems, sleep disorders and seizures or convulsions. So why is it important? The implication is we need to know, is autism curable? Is it preventable? Can the condition be stopped from deteriorating? In fact, this understanding opens up a whole new venue of treats. So we do know that genes influence causation or impact the autism from happening. We know through studies of twins, fragile egg and other genetic conditions. We also know that some of the mitochondria, many of these children have a weak or dysfunctional mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouses of the cells. And this can affect the child's ability to stand toxins in the environment. So the first thing that affects the child is dysbiosis or very commonly called the leaky gut syndrome. The bowel disorders allows antigens or toxins to pass from food environment into the bloodstream and affect the brain. It can cause inflammation uh, like we know that gluten and casein from milk and wheat can cause uh, brain inflammation. Then there is oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is affecting a lot of organs like in the heart, in the eyes, etc. But in children with autism, because they have a difficulty in converting methionine to, if you see the very complex uh, graph, the conversion of methionine to reduce glutathione is very important for detoxification. So for example, if we have lead or mercury in our body, the reduced deep glutathione will remove it. But these children have problems and they cannot get rid of the toxic metals. Of course, the toxins, the pesticides, things that we use in where arsenic is found, lead in paint, all our common dishwashers and floor cleaners have toxins. Now, this is a very interesting graph. There's a comparison between children with autism and healthy children. The blue is the autistic child and the yellow are the children who have a healthy body. And you can see the heavy metals have accumulated in the child due to reduced detoxification. So if we remove the heavy metals, the child's symptoms improve. And this is the basis of chelation treatment. Food allergies, particularly milk and wheat, this can cause inflammation of the intestine or the bowel and cause dysbiosis, allowing different toxins to enter the blood and affect the brain. And the food metabolism was suggested by Shatok Wright in 1998. And uh, he said that gluten and casein are very large proteins found in wheat and milk. And these are not completely digested. So the incomplete forms of a peptide, they are called casomorphine and glutomorphine. These resemble morphine peptide and it's similar to chronic morphine poison because it interfere with all the neurotransmissions in the central nervous system. Now, the effect of vaccines is highly controversial and Wakefield, uh, way back in 1998, indicated a connection, but uh, recent studies have not shown problems with vaccines. However, it is still a very controversial subject. What does uh, definitely damage is the thymocerol, or, which is a preservative found in many of the childhood vaccines. This is mercury-based and is no longer allowed in all vaccines. Now, Cornell University researchers reported a statistical difference between autism rate and television watching by children under the age of three. 
television can isolate the child and prevent the normal interaction which is so essential to their social and language development you know we human beings are the only animals who have such complex social ethos and language ethos the first two years are extremely important for interaction parents to increase social skills and language ability in fact the american academy of pediatrics currently recommends that no child under the age of 2 years should watch television and uh, after that maybe 1 hour a day or less than that and only if their language is well developed So uh, some studies show that risk of autism was associated with breech presentation, low APGA scores, that means the child didn't breathe well, gestational age at birth, the child was born too early, and family history of psychiatric problems. Thank you.